They're the unsuspecting intruders causing more than just a racket in this neighbourhood. And they're costing Ali thousands of dollars. When you've worked so hard for the perfect home, there's nothing worse than learning your new neighbours are noisy or there's a dog constantly barking out the back. Worse again, imagine having intruders that sneak onto your property at all hours of the day, helping themselves to whatever they can find. The Galliott family is under attack. Its backyard a feast waiting to be gnawed and nibbled by flocks of cockatoos. All it takes is a few to clue on to the wooden gold mine and soon enough, it's one big party. It's, it's really sad. Like after being at work all day, you come home and your house is trashed. Some hang poolside, eating structural beams. But most enjoy the taste of the kids' play equipment, taking big bites and sharing torn timber between themselves. So you don't even know that they're out there until you, you open up all the blinds and look out and... It's havoc. <laughs> it, it's not a small problem and I know it must be driving the residents crazy. This playground's oh only gosh. been up for about a month. The Look kids at have this. had this for a month, yeah. In Victoria's Dandenong Ranges, this is what Ali Galliott came home to, a cocky crime scene. Who knew timber was so tasty? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fences, outdoor furniture, door frames. It's not a job she wanted, and it's not what she installed CCTV cameras for, but this mum has become the Dandenong's cockatoo detective. They're not noisy They're until they sort of fly away, and then that's when they start squawking. Is there a particular kind of wood they like? I don't think so. There's three or four different types of timbers out there that they've eaten. At its peak, at cockatoo peak time, <laughs> how many would be in your backyard? 60. When, 60. This, yeah, when this damage was happening, I pulled in the driveway and just saw like a sea of white. The trouble with these intruders is the minute they're spotted, they disperse, only to sneak back. Destructive, very, very destructive. What do you reckon this is all cost? Oh, thousands of dollars, yeah. I actually know someone whose house was completely condemned because it was just, they were like termites. Bird behaviourist Mel Vincent. Look, there's a lot of benefit that they get from it. It's enriching to them. Um, in the wild, you'll find they actually do it to trees. It's how they make nesting hollows. It's kept the cockies entertained, but now Ali's children can't play on the equipment. It's covered in splinters. So they've found a new game. Is that a good one? Drawing scary faces on balloons to frighten them away. Put it up here. But the cockies couldn't care less. Yeah, we also tried to put, they say, um, different type of bird statues. Also no luck. Sounds like you've really had to get inside the head yeah. of a cockatoo. Yes, um, I even tried doing some, I painted the, the railing with some chilli oil to see if that would deter them. This was in a matter of two hours. Really? Yeah, yep. So why do cockies nibble away at wood so much? It's actually their nature. They do need to nibble a lot because of the way their beak works. Their beaks need to be ground down or they overgrow. Not far from Ali's home, the parrot species has moved in on another residence, well-kept veranda. I've had people that I've spoken to that have said they've lived in the area for 30, 40 years and have never had a problem, and all of a sudden their back deck has been eaten. Cockatoos have long called the hills of the Dandenong's home, and so Ali was hoping the local council could help her control them. They just said, um, unfortunately, they can't help. Just have some accountability or tell us what we can do to help our, save our backyards from getting destroyed, really. 